welcome back to welcome back to everything from Nottin Ireland's uh, probably least festive show. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you watched the last episode, anyway, we're just going to address that episode for a minute, like um, before we introduce our guest. Uh, what did you think of that episode? We had Santi on. It's unusual. Was it? Yeah, but I, I wasn't sure it was him. Were you? Uh, I, I don't know. Man. I, I'd say he was a helper or something. I'm going to be honest. I don't think it was. No, I don't think it was. That's me being honest now. Here on the show. I'm not sure he was much of a helper, was he? He was more of a hindrance. <laughs> I <laughs> think so, yeah. What? I think so, yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, after watching that, I don't think like our podcast should be cancelled. I think Christmas should be cancelled. I think so, yeah. After watching that. like, Yeah. yeah. We're going to bring on our, our guest now anyway. Today is kind of more of a bring on guest to talk about like certain topic, which is more about, uh, I don't know, I don't, we've always wanted to do this, um, but we haven't talked, I don't think we've had any episodes about it, but it's, it's around, uh, yeah, more around like the drug addictions and especially like in a small town like where we are, terrorists and stuff like that. So that's why we have uh, today Alan Duarte to talk to us today. Um, Alan, how are you keeping? Okay, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, a deep, a personal question to ask you straight off. What's your favorite color? <laughs> Baby blue. Baby blue, wow. nice. That's actually a lovely. Have we got color. any baby blue anywhere? Or? No. Uh, the kind no. Of fish. Well, kind Close of. enough. Then it's then actually not, and that's actually probably my favorite color. Yeah. Well, we. That's that's, we that's a nice blue. To it. This I one like on the mug. That's a that's a pretty. Yeah, yeah. yeah that that would be a good kind of representation. Of, uh, like yeah. Yeah. On our logo, the that type of red is actually my favorite red. That yellow is my favorite yellow. That green's my favorite green. Do you know what I mean? Like I yeah. Well, I like the black. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matches your aura. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like my soul. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you you did you you've grown up in did you grow up in Turles actually? I, I, I know grew up in Turles all my life, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Went to the C B S prime primary <coughs> school just across yeah. the road there and um Yeah. Went to the secondary school as well, you know. Yeah, I yeah. Really like school. Did you know? No, I was like a class clown, you know. I yeah. just made everyone laugh and That's you know, I'm kind of spend most of my time in the school hall or stuff you know yeah just honestly don't like the thing that i got from school as well was the times when there was laughter was like that those people having the crack in school like that was worth like i don't know i, I never take that back people always say like i will regret dropping out of school i still like years later will say i don't and i think it's different for everyone or whatever but like uh but like one thing i'll never regret is like that like laughter and stuff and like the socializing part of it that was actually good crack Oh, definitely, but, you know, I look back at it now and, and you know, just like, well, why didn't I just kind of do better in school? And Yeah. You know, I'm seeing people who I was in school with then and I see them doing really well in life and, yeah, you know, the good job and, you know. That's what I mean. It is different for everyone. Like, I'd never tell anyone to do or do not drop out of school. It's, like, totally their own, like, but, it's yeah. It's never too late, though. No, That's the thing, exactly. like, you know, oh, sure. people start, do, I, didn't, I didn't start training in what I do till I was 30. Yeah. It's, like oh, it's never too late to go back, you know. So yeah. I was in college about two years ago, in oh yeah. back to London, like so two years ago. Was, yeah, about two I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. mad. So I'm flying over and back to London, and I what? What do you mean? Yeah, I'm flying back. Yeah, yeah, I was having a great time. But um, <laughs> what I was thinking, um, I'm half thinking of doing more. Like just I'm like, definitely, I'm always yeah. doing more. So like it's like there's no window mm -hmm. that you have to do it. Yeah, in, like, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You like we always need. I think you should always try and better yourself. You know. Never let anyone mm. um, no. put you down and say you can't do something. You know, it's yeah. about like not not judging your past based on your future. Based on no, not judging your, your future, future based yeah. on your past. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Then like you see people that you thought like you know, so you're saying there's people who went to school who are doing really well and all that. Well, you don't really know what they're. You know what I mean? It might appear that they're doing really well, but they might have other troubles. Uh, or whatever that. You look, know. everyone has troubles. Yeah. That's just yeah. Uh, life and normal. Yeah. Um, you know, that's what. I think there's like that weird thing of like, I don't know, isn't that one of the old commandments or something about something about having it peeking at neighbours or something? Yeah. But like, uh, don't be, <laughs> don't be, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. But that's a law, that's not a commandment. Yeah, no, don't thou shalt not be peeking at the neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, isn't it? But uh, I think, I, I think when sometimes like, yeah, it's like, it's like what you're saying, like, and what you're saying, like, to that point is just like, I think there's always like, when we look at people and it's like, yeah, there's always, I think everyone might have an aspect of what we don't have or what we wish yeah, we had. Exactly. And they're looking at you in the same thinking, and even though it can be hard for us to think that they're thinking about us, but it's like, yeah. So sometimes, so sorry, go on. No, so like when you see someone, like say you see someone that yeah, you was doing really well at school or did well at school. The deal is you have to say okay, okay, he's doing well at school, but you have to take the whole package, everything yeah, they are. Yeah. Would you swap mm. places? Which I bet you won't. 
I bet you wouldn't swap places. You know, he, whatever. Probably uh, not. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, we only pick the good bit out of the other people. We don't pick their whole lives, and that's not yeah. realistic. Like, like people you know? seem to think, like, just because someone has a job that yeah. they're doing great. Yeah, exactly. You know, they might be, yeah. There's so that's many that. people miserable in their jobs. Yeah. Exactly. And stuck you know? and feeling trapped in them. Yeah. You know, looking at what other people have and kind of saying, I don't want to be them in their life, but I would like that yeah. aspect. So how do I bring that more into yeah. my life in line with who I am? Yeah, it's mm. all about balancing things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a thing in business where they actually do that to people they actually trap them so what you do is um I, i've heard of this like that you give them a really ni- you, if you have someone working for you give them a really nice car um you know bring them to nice the benefits events, all the, loads of this so they have high status but you don't give them any money so yeah. they can't they can't That's what the hsc do yeah so they oh, can't no, escape they can't yeah. escape. and they are miserable but to the outside world they look so successful yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. Like they're living the, yeah, the, the dream life. the dream yeah, but it's, they're actually prisoners so he's that does and there's like all these like uh instagram stars now who are not like yeah. there's like just it's it's like the definition of emptiness i do think and, and it's <coughs> not to say and it's not fair to say as well like they're all humans doing their own shit as well but like <laughs> but like as in they what it does so there's companies now set up in los angeles that rent out airplanes for a day not to fly but for you to go take pictures with as if you own it like private jets and like so so there's like so they have a lamborghini set up they have a jet and you pay a lot of money still but not as much as to actually buy the thing and you'll rent out and you don't even you're not allowed to drive the lamborghini you're not allowed to drive the plane obviously but you're you're allowed to sit in there for five minutes and get photos and then you're allowed to put them on instagram and be like oh i'm making it big and i have a few Bits of cash in your hand or something like that. Let's like go do that, man. Just yeah. <laughs> man, <laughs> that's just fakeness to me. Yeah, man. Do you know yeah. that's like so, social media is just I don't know. It's just yeah. It's a, it's an image. It's, it's a big downfall. Do you know and it, yeah. it affects a lot of people. Do you know um, yeah. Life as well. You know. But, um, do you know it's, it's a new addiction, isn't it? Like the social media and the phones and all that kind of thing. You know? Everyone wants to look good at it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Check their phone every five minutes. Yeah. I do, do and I do it myself to be honest yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, you know? yeah I, 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 have to watch, I have to be careful for that myself. Mm, you know? yeah. yeah, I had a black phone there a few months ago. And cool. Do you know, I was uh, I was away from the social media. And do you, and you find know, your mind was free when you're on the black phone? I found it was as free as it, it was. I found that it was as free as it ever was. You know, nice. and yeah. I didn't have any like, I didn't have any like problems, and you know, I wasn't like staying up till all hours in the night. You know, just scrolling through stuff. Mm. Do you know that kind of thing? You're playing Snake on it. <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> Snake on it, man? Was it not? No. What kind of a phone was this that? This was like an Alcatel phone. Oh, the Tetris. Phone. It was like, yeah. <laughs> but are you That's back right. now? Are you back with an unblocked phone? I'm like back it? with an unblocked phone the last, oh Jesus, the last six months anyway and how long did it take you to get back into like are you back at the same level of scrolling and letting it kind of kind of am, yeah kind of am, yeah so I have to be careful and watch yeah. out like yeah. this you know it's just I not healthy it's not that bad no, I just I find my head to be like so sucked in it doesn't like turn off it doesn't turn no. your head won't turn off no. when you're continuing and then if someone is like trying to have a conversation with me yeah, yeah, hold on a minute. That's, yeah, not that's really fucking rude, man. I no, know. It is, like, 100%. It is, like... Everyone, yeah. everyone loves it. Yeah. I, I think my... The only thing that stopped me from giving up the phone is that... I, I don't know now about you. This is probably a very personal thing that I do now, but the thing that would make it hard for me to give it up is I love... Like, it's really handy for me while I'm using the bathroom, like, in a more polite way to say it, shitting... I will like just be kind of scrolling through Instagram or that. Or sometimes for anyone that's watching this, I could be messaging you while I'm taking a shit. But like that's that's regardless. Like anyway, it's um, a lovely talk, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. But that's the only thing that's stopping me from giving up the phone. Uh, I don't have Instagram. I don't do Instagram. Do you not? Oh, I actually. I don't do yeah. I, I, it's kind of like I fuck it. I, I did Facebook and it didn't like it. it. It's enough. Like yeah, is that Facebook enough? is definitely enough. Uh, yeah, but I, I, even d- I even deleted Snapchat now. Is there any point in Instagram? No. Um, I there? don't know. I the, thing I, the only thing I like about Instagram is you can pick what you see. With Facebook, okay. your your whole news feed is what other people like. Okay. With Instagram, it only shows you who you follow. Uh, and so it gives you, you something to do when you're having a shit. Exactly. <laughs> so would he exactly. be considered a pusher <laughs> now, would he? Yeah, <laughs> it's sign up Instagram. Not, use code Kieran for 10% off your yeah. free Instagram account. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Shall we talk a bit more about your story anyway? I don't know. Do you want to go through a bit of the rundown? And I don't know, like, where... When, when did you have your first drink, like, or what was the... I'd say I had my first drink when I was, what, 14 or 15, do you know? It, it was addiction, like, with drug and drink. That's your... That was the thing, wasn't it? Uh, I'm... 
I'm um, cross addicted, you know, I've Kay. a lot of addictions, you know. Um, yeah. We drink, drugs, um, gambling. Yeah. Um, sex, you name it. Yeah. Know, um, but, yeah, I would have started off with just a bit of drink when I was 14, 15, you know. And, um, I, you know, I, ne- I, knew, I knew from the start that it wasn't for me because... It bought out a different side to me. You know, mm. it bought out um, a lot of like instantly, kind of seen that straight. I I seen that yeah. straight away because I'd always end up in rows and you know, yeah, in stupid arguments. Did you like it like straight that. away, like drink? I did. Yeah. I, I, I liked it, but I knew it wasn't for me. Yeah, if you yeah, get no, me, mm. I did. So, sorry. No, no. You made the connection early on that it didn't do you much good. Like yeah. it brought out. A bought out, um, side of you. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I bought out a bad side to me. You know, um, a side that I didn't like. But, but you I carried got, on. But as like yeah, as I got older, I carried on. And um, what was the benefit for you then? Because if you saw that it brought out that side of you, it gave me confidence as well. You know, I was yeah. able to talk to a, a, a girl. I was able to talk to a woman. Like you know, and yeah, I was able to kind of be a, a be myself. So I thought, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, just from there then, just kind of, kind of, um, yeah, stay kind of drinking and you know, all through the years then I kind of would have just been a binge drinker then, um, just drinking every couple of weeks, but going on like mad, like 10, 12 day binges, you know, Yeah. and just not being able to stop, like, and I just knew like straight away, like, you know, once I picked up a drink, I wasn't going to, like, I was going to be the last one standing. I couldn't like I I could never go out for three or four pints, you know. Your your sociable, like just go out and have a few sociables and come back uh, and yeah. You know, I always had to. I always had to be the center of attention. I always had to be the, like. We la- so, so far, like what you're saying, I can resonate with it a lot. Just my experience with it as well. Like I like the center of attention, and also I was always the last to leave. Like yeah, every yeah. party, like I was always just thinking you're great, like and yeah, you know, look, to know, look at me and yeah. It was just like how long were these parties going on for? It was just like feeding. <laughs> in. I kind of feel left out oh. here. Oh, I wasn't invited. They go on for days. <laughs> oh. It's not. It's not. It's not that fun by the end. Like any party no. I was at only went on two days at the no, most. Like not, you're, you're going it, into the pub and you don't smell a session after. Yeah. Like, you know, you're, you're, you smell the other pubs after. Yeah, yeah. Pubs. yeah. Do you know, it's just no. Yeah, it's, it's not nice, like you know. Um, yeah. But how long would they go on? How many days do you talk about? How long did you want to go? <laughs> they couldn't, like, yeah. However long they lasted. However long Alan was standing for. <laughs> however, Kieran, yeah. however. Do you know, however long they lasted for, you know. They yeah. were actually parties, they were a competition. <laughs> just, <laughs> you got just go with the floor, like, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I always found that whole, like, last, like, yeah, for me, I, well, I lo- like, only realised in the last couple of years, like, because I was, yeah, like, I w- there was, like, yeah, three or four days in it sometimes as well, like, and, uh, but by the end of it, I sat, I, I know it's looking back on it now. I didn't know it at the time, but I was like, why was I always the last one to leave and stuff? And because I was always the one like talking and stuff, like, and I was always like, yeah, the center. Like, wa- I felt like I wanted to be the center of attention for like that feeling of fulfillment or whatever. And it was like an opportunity to do that. Because when I was younger, I was really nervous. I was really shy and stuff. So like, wh- I really resonate what you're saying is, like, I knew that straight away. It didn't feel like me, but it was like that confidence. Or it was like, I felt like like when you said that thing, like you more like you. I really resonate with all that. Like that was. Totally the exact same for me. But yeah, like the whole thing about why well, l- looking back at it now, like being last to leave the party, I always realised that that went hand in hand with being the centre of attention. It was like, I hated when everyone else was starting to leave because you could start to hear yourself talking more or something. So I hated being the last like yeah. one to leave for that reason. I don't know, did you find that? Or, like I did, but... Um, I did, but... I would have... I would have always, like... Ringing up someone and just always having people around, yeah. you know. I was, yeah. And I probably wasn't a good influence on a lot of people as well, you know. And yeah, I know that, like, you know. Yeah. But, like through the years, yeah, just started binge drinking. Drinking was like it's not my primary addiction, you know. Mm. I've been smoking weed since I'm fourteen myself, and you know, smoking that all my life, and that was just like a bit of fun at the start, you know. Yeah. Nothing else, just a bit of fun, and I, you know, it, it, it kind of just resonated very fast, and like addiction is in my family, you know, yeah, cousins yeah. and you know st- stuff like that, and you know I would have seen it, you know, 
um, a good bit of it around, you know, my estate and, you know, just yeah. living in a small town, you know, with that Terrorist. much to do, yeah. that much to do and having too much time on your side, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know, like, if, if any of you thought, like, you know, no, you were growing up here that... Turles has a massive part to play in it. Yeah. Like, the amount of people, like, the ratio, I think, and although I always, like, say it here, like, I think that the ratio for musicians and creatives in Turles to any other per population, <coughs> I think, is greater than anywhere else in Ireland. I believe that, and I believe if there was surveys, if there was, um, a, like, a, a surveys done and stuff, I believe that would be the outcome. Mm. But on the other side, I would also say that I think the ratio for the amount of people doing drugs and drinking per population is one of the highest in, in Ireland as well. Like, you have all sorts of groups. It's not just, like, you go to one town, there's, like, this group of session heads, but you have, in Turles, like, every, like, subgroup of people, like, even when it comes to, like, the real GA heads, and so, like, there are so many people. That I'd say, I don't know how much has changed over the last couple of years, but, like, just a ridiculous amount. Because I've been to other towns, travelled around Ireland a lot, but Turles, like, consumes, as a collective, a lot of drugs and alcohol, like, that I don't, I haven't seen anywhere else. So definitely, I think, like, why you're saying that small town thing has a massive part to do. And I want, like, something I wanted to ask about that, like, did you think, like, if there was, like, stuff to do in Turles, I think there's more to do now, but, like, even when you were growing up, like, like, how much do you think that had a part to play? Like, did there just actually be nothing to do? Oh, it had a big impact, you know, not knowing. Or, you know, like, you, you could, like, there's only a certain amount of sports you can play. You know, and I was yeah. big into my, like I was big into the sports as well. You know, soccer and kickboxing and boxing. You know, I done that from <coughs> a young age. Yeah. Up until my late, you know, up until my late teens. But um, yeah, it was a bit uh, like having like there's only so much sports you can play, and that's only on for a certain amount of time. You know, but like the likes of that swimming pool. You know, that's mm. only built there the last few years. You know, yeah. that skate mm. park is only there what the last five years, is it? Or yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and yeah. And there just wasn't much to do. Like, so we had to we had to try find our own bit of fun. You know, yeah. what we thought was fun. Like, and unfortunately, you know, um, it turned me into um, an addict. You know, yeah, and it was just like I started smoking harmlessly, fourteen, fifteen, and before I knew it, like I was addicted to it, and I was dealing it, and. You know, I was, I was making people's lives a, a misery. Mm. You know, bringing on a lot of stress to them because if they didn't have my money for them, I, you know, it yeah. brings on a lot of, it brings on a lot of um, your life. But you come consumed by it, like yeah, it? exactly. Yeah. How did how did you know you were addicted to it? Because you start off just using it like for fun. When was there a point when you? Because other people probably see it first. Was there a point when you suddenly went? Oh, that's. I just might be a problem. Yeah, look, after a few months, like, I started off, like, I started off getting small amounts, spending my money on small amounts, and before I knew it, like, I wasn't even, like, I was being more stingier with it and greedy with it, and I wouldn't even have a friend over for a smoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd rather be on my own smoking in the back room rather than have someone in with me smoking, yeah. you know? Um, and I kind of, that's how I knew, you know? And then... As I said, from there, I, I, I started getting bigger amounts, started dealing it, and, you know, then started turning to other drugs, then along with that, you know, um, it, it was just... What was the change to other drugs? Because it, it sounded like there was stuff that you were getting from the, the alcohol it's and the cannabis. It was, it, it was, you know, there was a variety. I had, like, I had connections to get, you know, this, this type of ecstasy or it was available it was available yeah there, you know it, it, like i could get anything like you know well yeah. almost anything like mm -hmm. and in the in the blink of an eye like i could have it within 20 minutes you know that's how easy it was you know yeah. um but like yeah i knew like you know once i started dealing and i, I kind of i wouldn't say i was a big dealer now but i got into it big time and you know i made a like i look back and i've, I've made a lot of people's lives um you know, misery and put a lot of people into stress over it, you know, um, just for by um, taking advantage of them, you know, yeah. um, and making them feel vulnerable, you know, and I know what it feels like because it was done to me, like, you know, and yeah. it's only, 
like it's only now because I'm I'm just over thirteen months clean and I'm in mm. I'm in a good place like that. It's the more I become, the more I become um clean and stay in recovery. The more I start um thinking about like all the things I've done and you know the people's lives I've ruined and what I put my family through, my mother through, you know why put my friends through the people I stole from just being completely selfish you know not caring about anyone's feelings you know just worrying about Alan and I just didn't really care about anyone you know but I those realizations are so big improving like a genuine mindset change around mm, addiction yeah. those when you get those realizations that's so protective against going back yeah. to that way of being because your whole way of looking at everything has changed and shifted yeah. You know that you that, that's that's a thing of just like yeah, would my likelihood of ever going back and doing anything like that again? Like, well, I'm yeah. Or I'd or like to seduced. think that like you know I have a daughter now and you know um she's five years she's five now you know mm. um I was out of her life for a period of time you know um that was eating me up you know not being in her life and you know and I don't blame her mother for not having me in her life you know I don't their who like who want the father or their you know parent yeah. their child um around um you know drugs or whatever you know and it wasn't a, a good um environment for my daughter to be to be yeah. brought up in so you know I've I've got her back in my life and she was my higher she was my inspiration she was my higher power you know the yeah the days I wanted like to go running out of treatment the days I wanted to go running and give up. You know, I just thought of her and said, this girl needs a dad in her life, you know. She's after being true enough and I just can't do it to her anymore, you know. And thankfully enough, now I'm back in her life since July. That's really know? cool, man. Mm. And, and I'm really it, happy for you. Like, thanks very really much, you know. Yeah. It's been the best. It's, really cool. it's been the best part of my recovery, to be honest with you, you know, because yeah. she brings out so much happiness. Yeah. And, and just, to see, just to see her grow as a person, you know, and she's my daughter, like. That's so cool. She's... She's my blood, like, did, you know, did, she, did she help, like, like you know, because, like, when, like, an addictive personality, and it's just, like, as you said, like, you named out a few different addictions, and it's kind of, there's always a sense of, like, looking to fulfill, like, you know, a sort of something that's, yeah, not fulfilled, something that might, like, feel a bit empty or whatever, like, so, like, <laughs> did you, did, was, did she help, like, fill that yearning, or, like, what, did she, oh, like... Yeah, because you know, like people have a, like not not addictions, but we need to fill stuff. And uh, the best analogy I've heard about addictions is uh, an addiction is like a nail in a piece of wood. And but like, and if you can't get the nail out, like the only way to get like in a block of wood, the only way to get the nail out is by hitting another nail into it. So there's always going to be a nail in the wood to keep the feeling fulfillment. And I think all people in life, I don't believe that. This whole being empty and stuff like that—I don't believe in that. I think we all need to be fulfilled, whether it's positive or negative. Did she help, like, replace that, like, in sort of like, so, like, in to still give fulfillment, but not in the negative way, like? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Percent. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. She really just, yeah, yeah. She, she outflows everything that, you know, like. Don't get me wrong. Like, there's days I'd say to myself, "Jesus, I love to be stoned." Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm only human. Like, exactly. you know, yeah, yeah. I just love to be out my head. Why can't yeah, like yeah. I was, like a few weeks ago, my work colleagues had their Christmas party. Yeah, they were, they were all booked into a hotel for yes. like a, a weekend, yeah. going to Clannacilty, yeah. you know, yeah. free bar for the night. And yeah. you know, Adam, why don't you come? I don't know, lads, you know, I can't. Like you know, yeah. like, I've I've other plans, and just I, they know anyway about my story. Like, yeah, yeah. Just actually, you can drink in lemonade, can't you? Oh man! Oh. And I'm just like, no. I wish people would become more aware. <laughs> yeah, like, I was just like, like, no. But like, I s- like that's when I thought I just look to be normal, you know? Yeah. yeah. But so what is normal yeah, no. then? Exactly. Is that? Yeah. But like, that's such an Irish thing, though, isn't it? Like, if somebody w- doesn't want to drink or something. Can't you have one like? Yeah, <laughs> Jesus, like whatever. No, you could tell someone. You say if I if I go out and I'm around it, you could tell them I'll turn into an absolute demon and you'll have the worst night in your life. And they say, I ah, go on, yeah. <laughs> go on, like just one, you'll be okay. Like, it's like oh. no, I'm telling you what will happen. Like, there's yeah. only one thing you can say is like I'm on antibiotics. That's a good that one. I don't want to drink. That's a good one. That's a fucking good one. That's a good one. I'm not that into drink, to be honest with you. That's a good one. So I have to tell people I'm on antibiotics, even though I'm not like. That's good. <laughs> wow. 
That is well, a good one. Seizure medication. Yeah. medication. Yeah. That's a better one. Is it? Yeah, because oh, then you're always on it. Yeah, get yeah. epilepsy or something like that. Yeah. That'll work <laughs> out for you. The fact is, if I went to that, I wouldn't have been going back to a job. I know. Do you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be still drinking now. Do yeah. yeah. Do you think, like, because, yeah, like, exactly. you know, you're able to say that the difference it made kind of reconnecting with your daughter and stuff, do you find that there's other positives in that? Because... You know, a lot of the time people use drugs to kind of support self-esteem or, like, improve self-identity and stuff. Do you think that your daughter and the way that you're able to be and interact with her sort of improves your self-esteem and your self-respect and your identity and your role and purpose in life? And totally, all because it changes my way of thinking. Yeah. Do you get me? Yeah. Um, by just being with her and having her in my life is giving me a complete different outlook in life. Yeah. Do you know, it's made me appreciate the small things in life. Yeah. But it's put a positive effect into my head. Yeah. And the way I, do you know, the way I think, because I would have been a very, I, w- I would have been a person who got into my head a lot and got down yeah. and I wouldn't have been able to get out of it. And, but now, if I get a bad day and I, go, do you know what I mean? If I'm only, we're all only, we're all only human and we all go to have our bad days and, you know what not but if i have a bad day or uh, you know it passes yeah and i i let it pass yeah. you know i can sit with it yeah. i can sit with the emotions i'm feeling whatever emotion that is yeah and it'll pass because it's normal to do that exactly you're, if you're doing that or doing that or doing that's when it's not good exactly. to have that emotional variability is, is healthy yeah normal. but you know i just it's it's one hell of a journey you know um I just like you know. I'd like to say it, like you know, if anyone's out there watching this and you know you're you're struggling with addiction and you know you're, you're like you're going through a very tough time and trust me, you know, I I was I was for so long, you know, I wouldn't leave my house for for I, I was just in such a dark place. I didn't want to be around anyone, you know. I didn't want to talk to anyone. <coughs> I was suicidal every day, you know. Every day, I wanted like I didn't want to be alive, you know. I did not like. I'm surprised I I am still alive, you know. And I'm grateful I am, you know. Um, but to anyone out there who's like battling addiction and that, like, it's tough, you know. It is, but there's light, like, there's light at that end of the tunnel, you know. I thought I'd never have hope, um, and you just gotta put the work in, you know. And if you don't know how to go about it, like. You just, you know, if you want to kind of come off stuff and you're struggling to just link in with your GP and your GP will will link you in then with um, a counsellor then in St. Mary's or, you know, or wherever you are. Yeah. <coughs> is that the first step, the GP, is it? First step is the GP. Then yeah. he'll write you up a letter, a referral letter for yeah. um, for for um, a St. Mary's Clinic. And know. is it hard to make that first step? Like, have you got it, like it is because the first step is the hardest step. Yeah. But it, after that, then it gets easier. Then after that, you know? definitely is it. Yeah. Once you do it, like people start re- like once you start reaching out to people, people will start re- reaching out to you and doing their bit. You mm. know? Yeah. And I linked in with um, th- I linked in with a, a nice counselor. You know, um, an outpatient. You know, I was an outpatient, and mm. PJ Kendi was. He's a drug counsellor, and he's, you know, he, he used to link in with me once or twice a week. For, for is he from Turles? Yeah, he's Turles, from Turles, yeah. yeah. Do you know St. Mary's across yeah, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can the I, Sorry, can I just clarify that St. Mary's is the mental health mental services, health clinic, yeah. yeah. So, like, a lot of people don't really know kind of what they do and what they're, it's yeah. not sort of maybe yeah. here. So, yeah, yeah it's a GP referral Ma- to yeah. 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 yeah, you have your Saint psychiatrist Mary's. there, your psychologist, yeah. your yeah. counsellors, you yeah. know. Um, but, yeah, that's where I went, you know, and linked in with PJ Kendi. Um, drug counsellor and linked in with him for once or twice a week for about 10 months no I was still using while going into him but he helped me massively um, just having someone to talk to and yeah. just to try to get a bit of structure in my life you know for, mm. for the week you know so I'd meet him on a Monday and I'd see him the following Monday or I might see him the, the end yeah. or the Friday and he'd say no we're going to we'll, we're going to we're going to do out a plan for you and you can try and do this and, you know, keep to it and yeah. see how you get on. But I just found him very helpful, you know. He, like, 
one of the soundest people I've met, like, and yeah. he's really helped me so much, and you know, yeah. so much confidence, like, it's so much. He really put a lot of faith into me, you know, and he a belief in me, you know. He's um, persistent. He's persistent, you know. Yeah, he doesn't give up on you. He doesn't give up, and he d- he once once he sees you're trying, he will go out of his way and do anything for you. That's you know? true, yeah. and that's what he done for me. Yeah. Mm. I linked in with him for ten, eleven months. Um, you know, meeting up with him on a week to week basis, and then after that, he got me um, he got me a place in Nashua, yeah, you know, which is a twenty eight day residential, um, private residential treatment center. It's like a rehabil, is it like a reha- rehabil? It is, it is. Okay. Yeah, they have a detox there now, which they didn't have before. You okay, know? Um, like a benzo detox. Yeah, place. yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. benzo and heroin detox. Yeah. You know, um. Which uh, that's really good because a lot of treatment centres would say before that if you were on benzos you couldn't go in. You if need you to were detox still using yourself. heroin you couldn't go in, and that was a big stumbling block for a lot of people. Yeah, you need to detox yourself, yeah. like you know. And I found that tough over the years of being yeah. in and out of treatment and having to do that of detoxing myself because yeah. it's it's you know it's hard. You What's know? it like when you go in there to get off the stuff? It's you know they give you like. It's tablets to help or what? I had to do, and then they slowly, gradually bring yeah. it down off them daily. Like, but um, and do you feel like you're going through withdrawal or what? No, oh, you, you're feeling every yeah. bit of it, man. Oh, yeah. You're feeling every bit of it. The sweats uh-huh. are coming out of you. Your, uh-huh. your body's shaking. There's yeah. people coming up talking to you, trying to talk to you. You're not really talking to them. Yeah. Do you know, mm-hmm. it's just, yeah. it's an overwhelming feeling. Do you know, yeah. it is because. Is there like structure in your day there or whatever? Right, is they there put structure in your day, but for the first day, a few days, you'll be on a detox mm-hmm. and you, you won't kind of be part of the group as such. Yeah. You're just in your room yeah. and you're eating and drinking water and stuff yeah. like that. But like, that's a 28 detox or that's a 28 day residential treatment center. And it's a very, uh, you know, it's, it's very expensive. You know, it's seven and a half thousand, you know, wow. just for 28 days. And, it's you know it's very dear, but where did where does the money come from? Because I know it's different in different cases. They have ten people, or they they have some. They can fund ten people from Tipperary, from our Tipperary. Is that like a year the per HSC? year? A year, yeah. Okay, a year. Between, between the HSC, t- yeah, between the HSC, between a certain t- time in the year. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think to get like two runs of it of yeah of it, like but um. It's very variable, like it de- it depends on available funding, and that's yeah. why people's commitment to it before they go. Because if you think, like, yeah, that amount of money on one person, if somebody walks out after well, 28 days, yeah. do you know, it's a, to be honest with you, I find it uh, ridiculous, you know. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong, you're getting the best of treatment. Mm. Yeah. You're getting, sorry, you're getting the best of treatment, the, the best of care, like, you know, you're getting fed. You're getting fed every day. You're getting, you know, you have a nice warm bed. It's really like it's really modern, and you know, but mm. if it works, it's worth it though. But it's worth it I don't it. think, like, I think you'd wanna, I think you'd wanna think long term as in yeah. twenty eight days and have another plan in place for, for when like you come out a secondary or treatment or okay. have a plan in place for after that because that's yeah. what I done. You know, Lovely. I knew, I knew before I was going in there that I was going into a secondary treatment in. Um, fellowship house in Cork okay. and um, I was just waiting for a time for a bed you know so I was in treatment anyway and I only had like a week left and I was in group anyway and the, the counsellor comes up and says um, just Alan we got some good news we got you a bed for the 4th of January mm. so I was just like ah oh, man you know that's great you know just really really happy like you know I started I, I actually started crying and all you know because I wanted it so much like I really wanted it like from the 4th of January then, I went directly from Ashley to Fellowship and I don't know what, three or four month program there and it was definitely the best, it was the making of me, you know, yeah. it was, like you have a bit more freedom down there but it's more, it's more intense, mm. you know, the groups are more intense and like, it's not easy, but it, it's definitely worth it. Like, you yeah, know. yeah. Had you been in treatment centres before that, that yeah, time in Ashby? Yeah. I've been in and out of treatment centres since 2014. And what do you think the difference was? Because you said about that long-term approach and that ongoing care. Was that the biggest difference or were there other things as well that made the difference? Well, I hit a rock bottom in my life. Before, I was only doing it to please people, yeah. keep people off my back, just to keep them happy. Do you know 
Yeah, so it wasn't coming from you, was no, it? Your own it, it wasn't coming from me. It was just like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this now. This person will leave me Shut alone that for a while. Right yeah. Yeah. Shut that mouth for a while. Yeah. It's going to leave me off for a while. Right um, session when you come I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and it was just at least you know you can turn around and say you tried. Well, I did it. The two percent to shit. Exactly. But that's all it was. Is people pleasing, you know. But yeah. I hit the I hit a real rock bottom in my life, and I just I knew like it was life or death. Yeah. Really life or death like, mm. you know. Um and I went into Fellowship House and you know, it was definitely the making of me, you know. I, I grew every week, I grew, you know. Um, what did they do there? They you'd have you'd have two groups in the morning. The yeah. two groups were split up. Yeah. One group would go to the gym in the morning and the other group would stay and do um counselling. Yeah. And then you'd you'd switch it around then. In the afternoon, then we'd go to the gym and they'd come back. Yeah. So you were constantly busy, like, and Brilliant. you know, you're you're constantly working on yourself, and you'd have goals goals group as well, where yeah, they give you these goals. I remember, I know, I got a, I remember one of my mates actually gave me a goal. Um, see, you're not allowed a black phone okay. up, up until after three weeks of being in there. Okay. You know, so no phone, no nothing. And I remember I got my phone anyway, and after a few days, we had the goals group, and, you know, you're, someone has to give you a goal, say. And I got a goal anyway, and it was like, um, hand up the phone for a week. And I was only after having my phone a few days. Yeah. And I was like, oh, do you know, what's going on here? Like, do you know? I feel like I'm being picked on. Like, yeah. You know, so. give him yeah. the phone across the head. <laughs> like, he was saying it was distracting me, but I don't, like, yeah. looking back on it, it probably was, but. I only had it a few days. I know. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and w- it was a black, was it? It, it was, was a black it? phone. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't get handed up anyway. Did you yeah. hand it up? No, no, I didn't have to hand it up because yeah. the, the counselors thought it was too intense. Too intense. Like yeah, too it mean. was too too mean for yeah, yeah, yeah. someone who just had his phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, a black phone isn't, balance, isn't like yeah. you can't get Instagram and, and your Facebook no, and all no, that. Like that. Did your man have a phone that came up with that challenge? Did he have a phone? He had a phone, but I couldn't be. Oh, you couldn't as much as I'd want to be, yeah, like, I, know, yeah. I couldn't back and say, yeah, hey, yeah. lad, do you know? Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not having your phone. <laughs> phone you know? all, all out slaps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have ended in Tears. one of us being kicked out of the, the, yeah. the treatment centre. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, definitely. What I'd, other challenges did you do? Like, you know, we worked on ourselves, you know. Yeah, yeah. Really worked on ourselves, you yeah. know. Cool. Like, they'd be what? Feel Fourteen like. of us in the group, like, yeah. like I couldn't talk to it. Like I found it so hard, like talk to people and socialize. Yeah, Do you know, like, like honestly, lad, like that was like a big thing for me. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just having the confidence and to be able to talk to someone, but they, they just made me like confident, confident to learn how to breathe. You Brilliant. Know? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, because I used to kind of get stiff when I was in a group and yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't breathe. So that alone yeah. was making me more anxious than what I was. and That's the no. biggest trigger, yeah, because when your body gets stressed, the first thing you do is stop breathing or hold yeah. your breath. Exactly. And, and then, then it sends a signal to your brain that's like, Shit, we're in trouble now. Something's <laughs> yeah, going to fucking happen 100%. to us. And then everything freezes and you can generate your we own panic We all do that, attack. don't we? We all yeah. forget to breathe. Like. As soon as you yeah. breathe, it sends your body that, that message that it's all right. All right. Everything's yeah. okay. Yeah. But yeah. look... Um, Did it's you learn any it tricks that you can pass on to us? No, <laughs> like breathing and what else? Yeah, look, I've done a lot of meditation, meditation and stuff like good. that. You know, do you still do the meditation every day or most no, days? I'd be lying to you. I'd be lying to. You, I'd be lying to you if I said I did know. To be honest with you, and um, no, I don't. What but benefit did you get from it when you were doing it, though? I just found it very peaceful, and it, it was like, it was like um, a good start to the day. Do you know, your mind and your body is just so relaxed, like. I I used to do it like at half seven in the morning for like yeah. ten fifteen minutes, Brilliant. and uh, just the relaxness, the relaxed feeling, and just the, 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 the release. what it gives to you, you know. Mm. And you're not up tense straight away in the morning, you know. You're not racing; it, it grounds you, yeah. you know. It grounds you. Why don't you do it now? Just probably gonna be too lazy and <laughs> just. <laughs> it could be sometimes uh, boring as well. Like I I I think I do I do do it sometimes, but. I think it's uh, what I'm saying is I'm not boring when you're messing like I've just had so I do do it a lot like but I just for people out there I think it can it, it, sometimes like meditation seems to be the only thing 
I think the thing with meditation is I find I medit I do meditation. When I was making that sign, for example, I was doing meditation. It's a meditative pra- meditative yeah. practice. Like, um, I think people do think like the only way to because because what I got from doing that, I get f- off the same thing from stopping and closing your eyes and stuff like that, whatever. But um, is there anything you do that might give like that s- similar thing? Like it can be anything. Like so, like going for a walk can be meditative. Like walking your dog. Like or uh yeah be, be doing art music there's all these things it's something that you kind of get lost into and it consumes you and you're just in it and stuff um walking definitely helps, yeah you know put the headphones in like i've always liked going to like the woods and you know mm. um, yeah kind of being around nature and you know just the sound of the trees and the branches yeah. and yeah. just the, even the water the river going down the water and the sound of the water you know because that's doing the same thing as meditation. It's putting your mind it's, in it, now. Exactly. Mm. You know? exactly. So that's medis- sitting and doing meditation is fucking And you're actually it in it at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're moving your body like you are getting that kind of distraction away from, from any sort of self-generated crap yeah. in your yeah. head. Surfing is like that. It just yeah. like takes you in right yeah. into the minute. Yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. yeah. It hits you and you yeah. It's great, man. Do you know why I think, like, like yeah, when, like, nature, like, for me, that is as well. Like, and I was saying to you, like, recently about, like, and, like, you're saying surfing and your the rivers and, like, the, uh, our nature and stuff. There is something about, like, yeah, it's being in the now with art and stuff, but I never get the same thing as, like, yeah, when you're surrounded by forests or the, the ocean does it for me the biggest. Because when you're looking at that big ocean... There's something not as scary about wars and pandemics and all this stuff. There's something that's just a little bit less that's scary. Yeah. There's just something that's like, w- like regardless of like all like, and, and it's not to disregard humans' problems. Like, of like, which we, you know, I much like love for people and everything. But it's like, there's something so that you're being in the now, like a meditative way. But it's also like, oh, I completely forgot that this is the world we live in. It's not just about paying taxes and working and stuff. Like, there's actual stuff just growing on its own accord. There's vast oceans full of creatures that we haven't even discovered yet. And it's just like, and then we're kind of, I don't know, sometimes then getting caught up with small worries. And, and for me, it just brings me, it grounds me is the only way to explain. I don't know. Yeah, I while also, the, I love the, uh, see how irrelevant we are in the whole thing. Like, yeah. We're just, we're just little ants. Like, and that's not in a negative way. Like, no, no. And it's like in a positive it's way. free. We're free. What's the word for that? It's like, um, yeah, it's, it's free and it's like humbling, humbling yeah. Yeah. when you yeah. see it. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. What was I going to say? Would you, like, being, like, gone through what you've gone through, like, would you, would you take it back? No, I wouldn't. No? Because it wouldn't, it wouldn't have made me the person I am today. Yeah. You know, and I'm stronger than I thought I am. Mm. You know, mentally, I am stronger, you know. No one can break me down. Yeah. No one can put me down. I can, you know, for me, yeah. for me, peace of mind is everything. Do you know, once you have your peace of mind, and yeah, and uh, I think, I think you're very, you're you're on a good path. Do you know, but I would not take my life away. Um, now I've a lot of regrets. Don't get me wrong, but for the life I've lived, do you know, I've had enough fun in my life anyway. Do you know? Yeah, enough f- fun drama. I've all had all of that. Do you know, yeah, um, played all the parts. Played all the parts. Yeah, you know. And nothing good has came from it. Yeah, <laughs> but so now, now, but now you have something that loads of people don't have, and that they're about to make them say, "You know what not to do now." Yeah, and that is so valuable that people do not like understand. And like when we were talking a couple of weeks ago, or whatever, I could <coughs> like y- you can tell off someone like because I've like you know hung around with lots of people and experienced myself with like addictions and stuff like that. You c- you know, and like I can tell you like straight up like I, it's like you know it's a real comfortable conversation this because you can feel off you that you're at where you're at and it's like there's a proper sense of like fulfillment in who you are now like i can feel that off you like i i have like i can feel that sense of security in you that like yeah i don't i i, I just can't see you going like back or anything like and sometimes you do kind of question that when you meet people but there's i don't know i can't explain it but i i'm, I'm confident in you and i believe in you now like and i and like it's really cool that you have your daughter and stuff like that something you were saying about like um you were saying about like the work party about like uh you just want to feel normal again like i think what's really cool is like the, your awareness around that but i think when you persist in doing what you're doing now as you said there is no normal anyway but i still know what you're saying but when you persist in what <coughs> you're doing now and i, I don't I, i'm I, i'm confident i feel like i'm 
talking to like it doesn't matter saying it's you but just for people listening that are in a similar place you are because you already like know but like persisting where you are at now like eventually you will get to a stage where it, you will have full control over like having that drink and stuff because a lot of those people trying to persuade you to go out they still don't have that although it's not like might have been in the way of their lives as much but you get that added sense of security and stuff in yourself so now you have this whole when eventually you do get to go out to party whether you drink or not whether you just re- social events like or whatever that might be you will have like a level of security and confidence in yourself that no one else will really have and yeah, yeah it's yeah. rare like you know the key thing is to stay away from you know old friends you know, exactly fake i call them false fake friends yeah because that's all they were you know they weren't proper friends of mine you know mm. they only wanted me anyway when because I had stuff and you know, yeah. I was an easy target for them, probably, you know. And, and sometimes they like, like, uh, what's like, like, you know, like attracts like, like we attract where we, yeah, it's like, it was like, we, you weren't necessarily like, you didn't have any like, you know, like strong connections, but it's like you had mutual uh, needs or wants, and that yeah. can like, yeah, create a sense, oh, a small sense of friendships. Like, yeah, definitely, you know. And, I was thinking about your Christmas party, you know, um, there and that you didn't go or whatever. But I was thinking that there's probably maybe half of that group that didn't want to go, and yeah. just felt that they had to go. Um, exactly. I was funny I was, enough to say that I was one of those people. Like, so I remember I used to hate. I, I I was working in a particular place. I won't say where, <laughs> but I, hey, guys, well, well I, I didn't like the people I was working with. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah. was a horrible job. It was under so much pressure. And uh, hey, guys, we're all going for drinks on Friday, yeah? And I'd be going, no, my heart would be sinking, no, yeah. and I'd always. Make up an excuse why I yeah, couldn't go, yeah. or does someone collect me or something? Something. And, but like even the Christmas party, I hated it. I hated it. Absolutely hate. But I had to go because I couldn't think of of a good enough reason why I. I'm telling I didn't you, go. epilepsy. Uh, you know, I'd have to make up something. But, but do you know what I learned in life as well? Most people, you don't need that. to please anyone. Absolutely. If you don't want to do yeah. something, yeah. you don't mm. have to. But there's, l- but I said it to some of the others later on. I said I really didn't want to go to that, and they go, I didn't want to go either. But it was like one or two bullies making everybody yeah, do something yeah. that they yeah. didn't want to do. One or two people that I don't know what the hell, but um, and they probably didn't even want to do it either. Probably like. not. But like, <laughs> no, so, you, so I don't think you, the idea is to get comfortable that you can go to that party. I think the idea is that the people that went to the party should get comfortable so that they don't have to go to the party. That everybody can just yeah. chill the hell out. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You you shouldn't you shouldn't have to put on pressure on yourself. And for anyone, something yeah, and yeah. for anyone. Yeah, do but know? I met those people at that party that really didn't want to be well, there. the two people I work with, like. Yeah. Who are around my age? Yeah. They actually didn't want to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, they the genuinely pressure, didn't yeah, want to go. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And when I spoke to them, then that Monday and work, they're like, yeah. it was a good laugh, but yeah, I, I know, still yeah. would have not rather. I know. Yeah. You wake up the following morning after you dodge something like that, and you just feel so good, don't you? You know, they're you know they're they're, they're dying. They're all dying the next morning. It's a waste of time. Yeah, definitely. It's it's a weird but one. Like I think you just mentioned a few minutes ago about like not knowing. You know, you know now what not to do but like you were talking a little bit kind of before we started recording about like knowing what to do so like the whole way that you live now is different in terms of your day oh and yeah. like the simple basic things it's planned out like yeah no. do you want to mm. talk a little bit more about that because i like that's really that to me is really cool because that's shit that people can do from the minute they wake up to the minute they go to bed well it's like a little for support. me live for me day by day. yeah for me like you know i live on my own now that's a big change for me in itself, you know. Um, before I would have rather, or before I would have been used to people, um, you know, having someone to talk to, and you know, so now I just I try not and be in my flat as much as I can, mm. because the more I, I I've learned, like the more I'm in my flat, the less. The more I'm in my flat, the more I'm in my head, and mm. that's not yeah. good for my head. Yeah. So it's like you know, you just. You have to change one thing for another. So, like, routine. Go out and have a walk, you know. Like, before I would have never... Like, doing the simple things, eating something, getting a shower, you know. Mm. I would have went days without a shower, you know. And it wouldn't have bothered me. Like, no, I get a shower every morning and it does bother me, you know, because, uh, like, my personal hygiene is important to me. And, you know, um, it makes you feel naturally happy you get what I'm saying? It kind of yeah. is like... And it's, it's like you don't even have to do it. Like, before, say, if someone told me I had to... If someone asked me to go do something for him, and mm. 
I'd be like, oh God, you know. <laughs> but in life, you have to do people favors, and what you give comes back to you. Yeah, you know? it's that's coexistent, and that's only yeah. life, you know. So you do something for someone, that favor will be returned to you in another way. Yeah, yeah. You know, I never really seen it that way before. But you also, like, when you do something like that, even just getting up and showering, it's like a little dopamine hit. Because you go, that yeah, is. I fucking did yeah. something. I did. Yeah. After singing it's in the shower for probably yourself. for five yeah. minutes, and that's after, yeah. you know, and bringing out. And then you make your breakfast, and you're like, mm. I just made myself fucking breakfast. It's like a little yeah, pause. But your diet, is, your diet is just as important, too. Really know? important, and yeah. Do you know, for an addict, they can, it's so easy to get trapped into comfort eating. Yeah. Do you know? And yeah. I know that myself. Cause mm. I could eat, a fr- like... My mother has had to do a serious amount of shopping now over the Christmas and New Year, you know. Yeah. Just me being there, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, the God, like, is broke, is she? <laughs> where, where's this and that gone? I'm like, I mother, you know, I had that for an old snack or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, oh, well, sure God, right. Alan, you know, I'm going to have to fly down to the supermarket again. And yeah. It's just, it's funny, like, you know. But um, but it's part of self care. Yeah it, yeah, it is, you know. And, but it's just being aware of things, you know. And mm. I think if if you're aware of what you need to do and not what to do, like you need to help yourself. Yeah. Do you know? Like there's only so much someone can say to you, you can do this and do that without you actually wanting to help yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you get me? That's yeah. massive, so like, man. I yeah. can I can help you up the wall. Yeah. But you have to want to go up the wall. You have wall. to want to go up yeah. the wall. And mm. you're Otherwise gonna have to you're like trying to force. Exactly. Someone up and on you're going to have to try to get up the wall next time by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, because... That's so cool. That's a really cool way. Do you know it, what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but it's just the simple things in life. I live a simple life now. Do you know? I don't... I, w- I was a person to overcomplicate things. Yeah. Do you get me? Yeah. I'd make the most uncom- un- uncomplicated things complicated. Yeah. And it's just... It's just like my brain is just re like invigorated and restructured. Like, do you know? The magic is always in the simplicity. Do you know? Uh, but you know? it's amazing. I thought I was like, I was my, I was going brain dead from all the drugs. I really did. Like, yeah, I thought there yeah. was no coming back from it. Like, do you know? And like, it, it's amazing. Do you know? Does your it's brain a, get sharper the longer you it go? It does definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm after killing a lot of brain cells, but. <laughs> You can rebuild but the brain them. regenerates. Yeah, yeah you can rebuild them anyway. Yeah. You, know? yeah. um, you feel yourself sharper. And everything. Yeah, but look, it's just a simple life now. Um, I don't, I don't hang around with people. I don't want to. I don't do anything that I don't want to. You know, mm-hmm. I, you know, I think fitness is a big thing as well. Yeah. You know, it, um, it's a natural high. You know, it releases and dopamine into yeah. a body, and it gives you that feel good factor. Now, it's not for some people. It is for others. Know. But any kind um, of movement, any kind of physical activity will do something similar. Yeah, you know, yeah. And it still helps you to put routine and structure and shit into 100%. your day. And yeah, but it's just about keeping things simple, don't yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, do you know, um, surround yourself with positive people, you know. Um, yeah. You, you surround yourself with negative people, do you know, you're going to be yeah. negative. Like, but a lot know? of people don't get the difference like between positive social contacts and negative social contacts. Yeah. Like not you said about being in your flat, you're used to having people to talk to. But it's like making the distinction around like who's mm. good people for you to talk to and who's not. Yeah, yeah. You know? And like I would have found it tough like being on my own. Now yeah. I can sit in my own company and be happy, do you know, and look around and say, Jesus, do you know what? Life is actually all right, do you know. I'm mm. I have my own flat, do you know, and I'm doing good in life, you know. I have my me- mental health, which is really important. Yeah. Do you know, it's not talked about enough. Yeah. Um, I think. Sorry, go on, you. I'm gonna have to. Like, no, I was gonna say we're gonna finish up yeah. now anyway, because yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's about about doing things for yourself. So if you need to go to toilet, you can. <laughs> but, uh, but we're gonna appreciate that. We're Thanks gonna finish up now anyway. Man. This is genuinely one of my favorite. Very good. Yeah. Like, uh, conversations yeah. that we've ever one done. we've ever had. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the most. Yeah, it's a really valuable yeah. one. And yeah. thanks Your for sharing. Your honesty has been wicked. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It's really oh, appreciate. Really appreciate it, and thank you for um having me on here. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks for oh. being so um comforting and stuff. You know, Pass. no, no passing. And thanks if you ever on. need a handy, or if you ever need someone to come on again down the line, I'd be more than happy to do it. Definitely. That's the thing is, there's always so much to talk about. I don't know. Yeah, and you're you're. Really respect your level uh, of self awareness on it, and like I don't know, just on on behalf of whatever, like I just want to say thanks for being you and yeah, making the changes for you and right. stuff. Like and yeah, fair thanks play. Thanks very man. much. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate uh, that. Sure. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, 
Yeah, like and subscribe, and uh, we apologise for that episode last week uh, <laughs> with Santa Claus. <laughs> we've <laughs> what we've tried again? to redeem ourselves this yeah. week. So, yeah, 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 that's a very big contrast. Like, the last guy was drunk on the podcast. Yeah, that's a big yeah. contrast. But this is actually what, this is the message we actually want to promote. So, yeah, sound to Alan for coming on, uh, sound for our production, Owen doing everything there. Uh, he's doing all the magic on his own there, which is impressive. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and uh, yeah. see you next week. We'll so we'll let Alan go for a now. Yeah, yeah bye. So <laughs> see ya. You know where it is. U turn. Do a U turn. Right.